All right. Welcome, welcome. My name is Laura Wall, and I am an online coach, which used to be a very weird way to introduce myself, but nowadays people seem to understand a little bit more about what I do. So um, I am currently a coach for women who are uh, entrepreneurs. They work in business, but in my past, I was a certified personal trainer as well as a certified nutrition coach. So health and wellness has always been a passion of mine. I now just incorporate it in a more holistic approach when I'm coaching women who are stressed out over work and they're trying to develop some new and healthy habits around their work. So I would say I'm more of a mindset coach nowadays than I'm necessarily as well-versed as in nutrition, which is why I have an amazing partner today. Alicia Lohn is an RN and a certified health and nutrition coach. She has been studying medical medium, Anthony Williams, for the past several years. He's known as an expert in viruses, and his premise is that Food is not just for enjoyment, but actually it is the thing that not only builds our bodies, but can heal us. And Alicia is extremely well versed in the best foods that are not only for building our bodies, but for healing us as well as boosting our immunity. And so that's what we're going to be discussing today. Um, just a couple of little housekeeping. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mute everyone as Alicia and I are, are going to be presenting. And I suggest if you are on a laptop, if you'll click on the upper right-hand corner and switch over to speaker view. That's gonna put um, a big picture in the middle of your screen and make everyone else a smaller picture. And that's a little less distracting when you're trying to learn. Um, if you're on an iPhone, you're probably just gonna wanna swipe to one side or the other. That's going to just show one person's face, whoever is speaking. And when we get to the Q&A, I will unmute everyone and you're able to interact with us. Um, if you have, uh, at any time you need to get up and move, if you would just turn off, stop your video if you need to move around, because again, sometimes that's distracting to the other participants. Um, and otherwise, just this is your time. So make yourself comfortable. Um, got a pen and paper. Be sure to jot down some notes. Alicia and I will be sending out some additional information to you to, uh, on Monday about the class. So if you miss something, it'll be there as well as the replay. So without further ado, I would like to bring Alicia on and let her tell you a little bit about herself. And today's topic we're going to be focused on primarily is the body. So hop on, Alicia, and get us started. Hello, hello everybody. I want to welcome Janie. I just saw Janie and a couple others are popping in. I'm not sure who the next person just popped in was, but hello, welcome. I can't see your face. I'd sure like to. <laughs> Anyways, we're just, I just want to say thank you to Laura to begin with because <laughs> Laura is just one of the most amazing women I know right now and she's just really making some amazing efforts to connect women and bring us together just like we're here today together and all over the country and in Austin and San Angelo and all over and I'm just so so thrilled and just grateful for um, to have you Laura <laughs> in our lives because you're you're really making a difference so thank you so much so yeah, my name's Alicia Lawn. I'm from San Angelo, Texas originally. I've been a RN for almost 30 years now. And more recently I've become a, I went to the Institute of Integrative Nutrition and became a certified health coach, nutrition health coach. And um, I also teach yoga. I'm a Kundalini yoga instructor here at, in San Angelo, at Yoga San Angelo. So yeah, health and well, wellness is just kind of my passion. If you know me, you know that I'm just love you know to talk about it it's about all I like to talk about is health and wellness and how you know these days we can keep ourselves healthy and you know it, it's a whole different world this 21st century and as you've seen recently times are changing and, and we we're gonna change with them that's why we named this new world new health I mean there's things that have worked for us in the past you know um, years ago that just uh, aren't going to work for us anymore and it's exciting because you know change is always evident we, we're always going to have change and and this and that so I'm going to get started here and we're going to we're talking about the body today our series is going to be body mind heart spirit and all kinds of good things but I really like focusing on the body you know so today I just want to talk a little bit about you know 
just becoming and assessing, I know since we've all been home during this time, are, are we, are y'all, you know, starting to look at what's coming into our lives? I mean, we just seem to have such better focus on what we're doing and our time spent and, you know, the, the programs we're watching on TV. I mean, what are we allowing into our bodies these days? I mean, this is through our eyes, you know, our ears. What are we listening to? What is this new? Who's telling us, you know, is this making us feel good or making us feel bad? You know, the programs we choose to watch, the, you know, the people we talk to in our lives, our friends, and, you know, the, the music we listen to, you know, this just, for me, I'm just becoming more aware of really what's coming into our bodies through all these orifices that we have in our lives. Um, you know, and for women, you know, the, what the you know the things we put on our bodies we're gonna give you some little do-it-yourself hand sanitizer recipes that are healthy i mean it's you know everyone's obsessed with lysol and hand sanitizer these days and we just have to realize that i mean those those are chemicals and we need to be a little more aware of what we put in our bodies so we're going to give you some, some super healthy you know recipes today laura's got a great one for you and we're excited to share that with you in my book let me see where it's at hearts of health <laughs> hearts of health i wrote about you know women especially we we can lather up to 515 chemicals on our body a day i mean that's a lot of chemicals i mean there's just so much stuff that we're bringing into our bodies and is this good for our immune system well probably not so we're just going to give you some tips today on on how to build immunity naturally and i will get started with my favorite part which is healing foods uh, we'll be sending you a little list of all these healing foods that you can start, you know, maybe trying some new ones, maybe one or two each week. So I'm just going to get started here. I've got this list from A to Z, and I'm just going to hit on a few top foods that I think are really important nowadays. And the reason nutrition is so important is because it's, it's the antioxidants that are crucial for us these days, crucial, crucial to build our immune system. And these antioxidants and phytochemicals that are in these foods are mostly found in plant foods. So you'll, you'll notice that all these foods that I mentioned come from a plant source. So we'll start with a, I mean, apples for, you know, for the sheer fact that apples are just, they're one of the most hydrating foods on the planet. They have a special cellular function that just can completely get into the cells and hydrate the body on a really deep level. And the big thing with apples is you wanna choose the darkest skin apple that you can find because when you get the dark skin, like the red delicious apples, they are gonna have the highest source of anthocyanins, which is a chemical that's really good um, for the immune system. So the darker red, the better. Let's get into some more A's, artichokes and asparagus. I'm so excited. We have a, a doctor here in town, Dr. Dunham, that, that delivers us vegetables each week. And today he actually delivered artichokes. I got the cutest little artichokes you've ever seen, artichokes and homegrown grown asparagus. So asparagus is known as like the fountain of youth. This food will actually break down crystallizations. Anyone ever had a kidney stone or know anyone that's had one? Asparagus is like a superfood for, for breaking down things in our body that, that don't serve us and flushing them out. It's a very uh, detoxing food. And the artichokes are amazing as well. They're another superfood. They are going to, they're really good for anyone that may have thyroid issues. They're a superfood for thyroid conditions, which a lot of us have these days. Arugula is a super green uh, power food as well. Atlantic sea vegetables. Uh, does anyone ever use kelp or Atlantic dulse in their food? That's, those are some really good ones. They have iodine in them, which is like a natural antiseptic. And nowadays with all the pathogens, the viruses, and um, we need these antiseptics and antiviral foods. So I'll be sharing these an antiviral foods with you today. Bananas are completely an antiviral food. They fight off viruses which is, I eat them actually every day. <laughs> I usually have about two bananas a day in my smoothie. Berries, of course, are super duper high in antioxidants. I'm gonna share a specific berry with you today, which is at the end of the list here, but, and that's the wild blueberry. And if you know me, I, I know you know that I'm a big proponent of these wild blueberries. 
because wild blueberries, the, that dark, really dark skin that they have is one of the, just, it, it just blows away the regular blueberry. I don't know why, but they're just so much more powerful and they have so many more antioxidants and they're truly a food that can just, if someone has been chronically ill for a long time, this is a food that you'd want to bring in because they will just <laughs> resurrect you out of the ashes. Complete superfood. All berries though. Brussels sprouts are another superfood. Broccoli are loaded with vitamin C. Both those have lots of vitamin C and it's just crucial nowadays that we're bringing in this extra vitamin C. Extra vitamin C, extra zinc, those sorts of things. Celery, another superfood. Some of you may have heard of the, the big movement with celery juice. Uh, Anthony Williams, a medical medium, kind of be, started this movement. Celery is actually an herb, and when you extract the juice from it, it becomes a really powerful herbal tonic. And the reason it's such a good food, I mean, it has numerous benefits. It will, it will actually rebuild the hydrochloric acid in the stomach, and it will also break down the cell walls of viruses and bacteria pathogens so that they can be flushed out of the bodies, which is a super amazing yeah, benefit of celery juice. Also, if anyone has uh, acid reflux, it's a it will literally make that stuff go away. Acid reflux is a bad buildup of bugs in the body and the gut. This celery juice will flush that out and completely halt acid reflux. So you want to make sure and drink it the correct way, you, you want to juice a whole head, a whole batch of it. 16 ounces is what it usually comes out to. Buy organic when you can, can because celery is heavily sprayed with pesticides. Let's move on. Cilantro, that's one actually I want to talk to you in about. Is that in my herbal section? No, I'll talk to you about it now. Cilantro is a superfood because it pulls out, it actually extracts toxic heavy metals from the body and the brain. And um, if you use deodorant, <laughs> if, you, if you use, you know, standard deodorant that has aluminum in it. So that aluminum ends up absorbing into our bodies, goes to the brain. And that's why we're seeing so many people with dementia and, you know, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's these days and all the mercury. Like I had all the mouthful of mercury years ago and uh, I was becoming mercury poisoned. So um, cilantro will actually pull these heavy metals out, out of the body safely. So it's a great one to pull in, you know, make your salsa, throw it on your Mexican food, on your beans, whatever, bring in that salsa. Coconuts, this is a, coconuts are a, an interesting food because they are actually, they're high in fat, but they're actually an antiviral. So if you want a, a good source of an oil, I don't recommend using a lot of oils right now. You want to kind of keep the fats at a minimum which I'll explain to you later, but coconut oil is an antiviral, so it is a, a superfood for this 21st century when issues we're gonna be dealing with are bacteria and, and viruses, overgrowth. Oh, the crucif cruciferous veggies, I mean, I'm talking the kale, the radish, the red cabbage, the cauliflower, the watercress, the kohlrabi, the collard greens and mustard greens, these are all superfoods for sure. Figs and dates, Let's talk about onions and garlic for a minute. Onions and garlic are, they're, they're kind of, what do you call it? I'm gonna say antiseptic. So they, they keep our bodies clean. They, they fight off the pathogens that are all the bad bugs. So it's, if you can stand it, bring in more you know, onions and garlic. Ward off the vampires. <laughs> all right, grapes are of course superfood. They have lots of antioxidants. Hot peppers, you know, bring in your jalapenos. Kale, I think I already talked about kale a little bit. I think, yeah, that's in the cruciferous veggie family. Kiwi is tons of vitamin C and kiwi. Leafy greens are a must. All the leafy greens, the lettuces. Bok choy is one of my favorite leafy greens. I've learned about that uh, when I was in school, in health coaching school, about bok choy. And now our farmers here grow it and you can buy it in San Angelo at the farmer's market. So. Actually, I'm growing it in my garden right now, so it's another superfood. Lemons and limes, of course. They, lemons have a, a natural cleaning power to them. So what they do is they gently cleanse the body, and they, especially the liver, what's happening nowadays is that our liver is getting plugged up, and that's why so many people have, are carrying a little, you know, more weight than we should. 
because the liver is the filter of our body. When our little filter gets plugged up, the weight starts coming on. So drinking 16 ounces of lemon juice at first thing in the morning on an empty stomach, I mean, that's just a nice, gentle body cleanser that can really help with weight control and, and whatnot. Alicia? Yes, ma'am. You, you said 16 ounces of lemon juice, or do you mean? Water. Okay. Thank water. You. <laughs> Just checking. Squeeze, squeeze like half a lemon into your water. Thank you. I've got the celery juice and the lemon water. <laughs> a little confused there. Yeah. Perfect. Start the day with that. Melons. Melons are amazing. Uh, watermelons and cantaloupes, they're when they come into season, you can get them at the farmer's market. They're so delicious, especially very cleansing, cleansing foods. These pull out toxins out of the body. So superfoods, truly. We, we don't realize what, how you know, amazing Mother Nature is with just giving us these, these great foods that are here to help us stay healthy. It's just a matter of kind of knowing how to bring them in, you know, bringing more of them in. Uh, mushrooms are another superfood. Shiitakes are fabulous. Chaga mushroom. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about chaga mushrooms later. Um, papayas are an absolute superfood. Want to make sure they're really ripe. The uglier they look and the mushier they are, you squeeze a little lemon or lime on them and they're delicious most of the time. <laughs> Sometimes you can get a bad papaya. Uh, peaches, nectarines, pears, pineapples. Pitaya is red dragon fruit. It comes in a frozen section. It's hard to find the red dragon fruit at the grocery store. You usually cut it open and it's white. But the red dragon fruit, it's that dark red color, that anthocyanin, which filters and cleans out the liver. Superfood for sure. Pomegranates, potatoes are antiviral food completely. They have lysine in them, natural lysine. So don't be afraid of carbs. Don't be afraid of, you know, bringing in these carbs. You just have to know how to eat them. You don't want to put them with lots of fat. That's when they become problematic when you add a bunch of fat into the carbs. Anyways, uh, let's see, radishes are another superfood, raw honey, red cabbage, spinach. You want to make sure when you're eating spinach to take it in raw. When you cook it, it, it just kind of kills everything. But when you eat it raw, it's, a, it's definitely a superfood. Super Popeye knew what he was talking about, evidently. <laughs> even though it was canned. <laughs> okay, sprouts, microgreens, these are just powerhouses full of nutrients. Sweet potatoes, another superfood, a great potato. Tomatoes have their own special source of vitamin C. So I am just so into tomatoes right now, tomatoes and cucumbers. Turmeric and ginger, those are superfoods, little roots that, that help with inflammation. And there's those wild blueberries again. I think I mentioned them. They only come in the frozen section of your grocery store. So, I mean, super duper antioxidant. Winter squash. Have you ever tried kabocha squash? It's, you can find them on occasion around here. Um, I, I get them at the farmer's market. HEV sometimes has them, but kabocha squash is a kind of a round, dark green squash. And it's it's really rich and thick and hearty, and it, it's a great, great one to try. Acorn squash, I've been enjoying eating some acorn squash and butternut squash soups and stuff while on quarantine, so, and zucchini. So those are our foods. Anyone, I'm gonna say, let me move on to uh, some supplements. Supplements, I mean, everyone has, who's got their vitamin C? I mean, everyone's talking about, vitamin C and you know all supplements aren't created equal but here's a couple brands that are truly like gold standard and this is pure encapsulations amazing brand of vitamin C clean no toxic additives like like a lot of the supplements these days are just junk so this is Vimergy with a V V I M E R G Y Vimergy is a great brand Ester C I like the Ester C's because they, they do a nice little buffer on the stomach. They're not so hard on the stomach. And C is absolutely crucial for us, truly, right now. Ionic zinc. These are my favorite little ionic zincs. This is, the green one's called Good State. Good State brand, and it's fabulous. It's liquid zinc. I put it in my water in the morning, and this is the Vimergy brand of zinc. So... And these are all extreme. Uh, viruses hate <laughs> uh, 
vitamin C, they hate zinc, and they don't like lysine either. Lysine is one of my favorite antiviral. And viruses are, I mean, it's not just about this flu virus. Viruses have taken over. Let me tell you, if you know anyone or have ever had cancer or autoimmune disease, think of virus. These are viral diseases, and we have to just you know, wake up and, and realize that it, it, it's for real. I mean, viruses are really out there, but, but when we have the knowledge, which is super exciting, we know how to take care of our bodies and to, to fight off these viruses. And it's not as big of a deal as it, it may seem. So what else can I tell you about today? How about chaga? Here is the chaga mushroom. This is this brand I think is called Micro Ingredients and I like this brand. Chaga mushroom is my coffee in the morning. I do a chaga chai latte with coconut milk and cinnamon and nutmeg and ginger and cardamom and it is in raw honey and it's delicious. It takes the place of coffee. It's super energizing and what I learned about it today, I was super excited. This is the most fabulous book ever, The Medical Medium, Life-Changing Foods. I was doing a little more research on it today by Anthony William, Life-Changing Foods. And I found out that not only is it just loaded with all these chemicals, what it does is it re revitalizes the white blood cells, the red blood cells. And y'all, have y'all heard that term, the cytokine storm that they're talking about with this flu, this coronavirus that's going around, it's called the cytokine storm, and that's what ends up getting the people, evidently. But it staves off this cytokine storm. And that, in a, a cytokine storm means when your body is overreacting to a pathogen and it just like gets flooded and it, this reaction just causes, wreaks havoc on the body. So this stuff, this chaga mushroom actually, you know, filters all that out and boost up our white blood cells and all those little fighter cells that help help fight off um, these pathogens. So superfood, I love it. We doing okay on time, Laura? How, how are we doing? Thumbs up. Hydration, we'll talk about hydration in a minute. Most of us in, you know, these days are chronically dehydrated. I mean, if we start our day with coffee or if we have a glass of wine in the evening, that we need to boost up our, our hydration even that much more. So, you know, I've, I've got my lemon water here with thyme on top of it, a little sprig of thyme that's been infusing. Lemon, once again, is a natural hydrator. So when we take it first thing in the morning, what our liver does at night during the night, it does all the work to detox us and help us clean out. So when you drink that big glass of lemon water in the morning, it just helps to flush everything out and hydrate our cells. Another great hyd hydrator, if you have a juicer, you can always um, try some cucumber juice. Amazing hydrator. And a cucumber juice also flushes out toxins and poisons out of our body. It's a real good cleanser, especially like if someone had the flu, <laughs> you would want to the most important thing when we get sick with, with these bugs, colds and flus is to stay hydrated and not, I mean, low, low, low fat. I mean, we want like vegetable broths and we want juices and smoothies. It's so important to keep our blood fat level down because when we, we have too much fat, which is really in right now, I know there's a lot of keto people probably could have some with us today, which is fine, but this is not the time to be taking in too much fat because what happens is our blood oxygen level decreases. And right now, you know, with this, with this pandemic, we need our oxygen levels as high as possible. So keeping those oxygen levels high, that means we need to lower our, our fat levels, fat intake. So that's real important. I'll talk to you just a little about, about healing herbs. I, I picked an herb for you today. It kind of went limp, but this is my my lemon balm herb and lemon balm is actually in the mint family. It, and it grows, it's, it, I mean, it grows like a weed. This one came back and lemon balm is one, it, it should be like the herb of the 21st century. It completely fights off pathogens and lemon balm is, is an antiviral, number one, it will kill viruses. Number two, it's antibacterial. And number three, 
it calms the nervous system. So this is one that we can grow in our backyard. We can chop it up, put it in our food. We can, you know, add it to our waters. We can infuse a uh, lemon, you know, our water with it in the morning, throw a few sprigs in there. Another amazing herb of the 21st century that we should all have in our backyard is thyme. So I've got my thyme water here. <laughs> I'm just letting it, you know, soak into my, you know, I'm gonna take a sip here. So thyme is the number one flu herb. I mean, its job is to like kill the flu. <laughs> this, this herb alone can kill the flu bug off. So I highly suggest start bringing these, you know, these aromatic herbs. They were put here for us, for God, for us to use as antibacterials. Oregano is an antibacterial, you know. Let's see, thyme. Parsley is another super herb. Parsley is the most alkalizing thing, herb that you, we can put into our bodies. And let me tell you, my, my favorite new recipe you have to, is tabbouleh. All of a sudden, I'm like a tabbouleh fanatic. I just get chopped cucumbers, chop up um, tomatoes, and um, I go out to the garden and I pull my parsley and chop it up and add some lemon juice and a little, maybe a little garlic, fresh garlic, and maybe a little salt, and it's just a dash. I, dash of um, olive oil. I try to keep the, the fat real low. And then I, instead of the wheat, which can be problematic for some people, I put um, quinoa in it and it is absolutely fabulous. So try it out. It is so yummy. It takes literally minutes to make. It's super hydrating and it's loaded with vitamin C and parsley, which alkalizes your body. So I think I'll just share uh, one more thing with you here. Oh, cat's claw. Cat's claw is another amazing herb. This is my big giant bag of it. You can drink it like a tea. You can take it as a tincture, which I have for you here. I, let me grab it. I make my own tinctures. And so what I do is just steep it in glycerin and for about six weeks and shake it every day. And you have your own medicine. This is antibacterial, antiviral, kills off the bugs and keeps us healthy. So that's cat's claw. And the, the same can be done with the lemon balm tincture. You can get it in, in a tincture, but just make sure you always buy an alcohol-free version of it. Don't ever get the ones with alcohol because they will diminish the, the potency of the herb. And yeah, are we okay? Do I have a couple more minutes here, Laura? Or how are we doing? You do. I'd say about two more minutes and then I'll talk a little bit about essential oils and then we'll pause and let everyone ask some questions. Fabulous. And just a note, I've been writing some notes for y'all. They're over in the chat box. So if um, you're on a laptop, click on chat at the bottom, a little box will pop out and that has some um, information that Alicia's already been talking about. I've been spelling some things out for you. Now we're going to come to the dark side of the conversation, <laughs> things to avoid. And, you know, just take this with a grain of salt. If, you know, it's hard to tell people what to do. You have to try these things out for yourself. But during this, once again, the 21st century, the, the issues we are, are dealing with with health are pathogens, and they, they truly are viruses. I mean, viruses go way beyond this corona thing. I mean, they're really, especially in women, they're, they're causing you know, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, thyroiditis, MS. These are all viruses. So things to avoid, foods that don't help the virus, that, that knock down that virus. We wanna keep the canola oil out. If you're using canola oil, this is highly inflammatory. So just take it out. I'm not gonna get into it. Just, just trust <laughs> or take it with a grain of salt. Pork, pork um, is not a superfood for us anymore. Pork is extremely high in fat. And this is just a food that if you can really reduce it right now, and lower your fat, this would be the, probably one of the top foods to reduce this pork. Little piggies, we love them, but. <laughs> okay, here's where people really start throwing tomatoes at me. Hope you don't have a tomato to throw at me, but if you do, I understand. Eggs have become problematic. We love our chickens, we love our eggs, or pasture raised. I get it, I, I'm, I was in love with them too, and I've had to just say, I love you, but I love you over there. What's happened with eggs is, over the years, they were once a great food for us. Same with wheat. 
what's happened with eggs is the, the laboratories, the scientists began feeding these viruses in the petri dishes eggs. They're also used to make vaccinations. They have to make the vaccinations. They put the virus in there. They have to give virus a medium to grow on. They give them eggs. Eggs, I mean, viruses know how to grow. They, just like we love them, love eggs, viruses love eggs and they can grow and multiply. If you get sick or if you have any conditions, I would say try taking eggs out of your life. I mean, you know, even for a month or something, just see how you feel. If, if you know, just, it's up to you. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just giving you the information here. Same with dairy. Dairy has the same problem. Dairy is real high in fat, which will plug down or it'll lower our blood, blood oxygen level. But the other problem with dairy is it feeds the viruses too. It feeds bacteria. It feeds viruses. These are the issues that we're going to be dealing with nowadays. And we just have to, you know, take a closer look and maybe try out some alternatives. I mean, they have some, they have a coconut cheese that's amazing actually, believe it or not. They have alternatives, you know, to these, to these foods that you don't, you don't have to feel like you're giving all these things up. Maybe try bringing in new foods. Like instead of cheese, I make my own cashew cheese out of, out of cashews. It's real simple. You just soak the cashews, Put a little water in the blender, put a garlic and put some lemon and you blend it up and you have this delicious like dip or like it's kind of like a sour cream or so that's what I have. One more thing, GMOs, it's real important that we are become more aware of the GMOs because they are problematic. They do disturb the, the immune system. So that's going to be like the corn. We love our corn, but just get the non-GMO kind, get the organic when possible. So I'm going to Thank you all for listening. I'm just so passionate about this. I'm just glad it's a lot of information. Turning it over to Laura, our awesome host here. Thank you, Alicia. That was fantastic. I jotted down some more notes. Um, Alicia has been health coaching my husband, and I don't know if many of you have men, but they have man ears and they only hear certain sounds. And apparently, Alicia is a man whisperer because he is listening to her and he is um, definitely following what she is suggesting for him. And for someone who has loved, loved, loved eggs for a long time, he has finally taken them out of his diet and he's starting to see some benefits in his health. So, and I'm almost, almost fully committed to the celery juice myself. So thank you again. I'm gonna talk just briefly about some essential oils that can support your health. And then we're gonna pause because we know we've given you a lot of information and you may be holding back some questions. So um, when we get to that part, either you can put it in the chat box or you can raise your hand and I'll call on you and you can unmute yourself. So I'm very passionate about essential oils. If you're not familiar with them, they come from all different types of plants. So they are harvesting the oils from barks, leaves, and flowers. And the way they do that is a uh, distillation process with steam. So they are pulling out the essential nutrients out of, an, out of those plants. And plants have a defense system. So their defense system is what's in these oils. So when you are getting the constituents out of these oils, you are getting things that bolster your own immune system. So my favorite oil of all time, and this is the one I put um, on myself before I go out in public these days, and it's called thieves oil. Uh, the history on thieves oil, the reason it's called thieves is in the 15th century, there were some uh, grave robbers in France, <laughs> and they went to the pharmacy and they told them they needed some sort of, you know, potion to keep them from getting diseases. And they had this concoction made for them that they put on themselves because Apparently, when you rob a grave and there's bodies and they're decomposing, there's a lot of diseases. So this is a combination of multiple oils. It's a blend, including clove, lemon, cinnamon, eucalyptus, and rosemary. And as you heard from Alicia, the incredible power of lemon. So this blend is available through Young Living. Um, doTERRA has their own formula of something similar to this and then I'm going to include a do-it-yourself recipe um, if you only have like the single oils maybe you didn't buy this one right now with Young Living this thing is selling like hotcakes so it's a little hard to get a hold of but what I like to do with the oil itself and again if you make your own blend is I take several drops of this about 15 drops of this I put it into this teeny tiny little bottle and I fill up the rest of it with fractionated coconut oil 
which is called a carrier oil. And a carrier oil basically just helps distribute it across your skin. It doesn't lessen its potency. So I take this little roller baller with me before I head to shipping point or I'm going to the grocery store. I roll it all over my hands. I rub my hands together. I rub it under my fingernails. I've got it all over my hands. And then I put on some plastic gloves just in case. But if my plastic gloves break, which they have in the past, then I know I'm protected with that thieves oil. And it smells amazing. It smells a little bit like Christmas and Thanksgiving all rolled together. One of the main components in uh, the, the thieves oil is clove oil. And clove oil, it has an active chemical component in it called eugeniol, which is a really energizing fragrance. And it shows that this has the ability to assist the body in terms of um, maintaining gastrointestinal motility, which is super fancy words for it keeps your gut moving. So again, when we are trying to maintain a healthy body, we want everything flowing and going, do we not? Yes. Um, another oil that is really helpful for supporting our immune health as well as right now, as Alicia mentioned, something that we really want to focus on right now is having lots and lots of oxygen in our blood. And one way to do that, of course, is taking nice deep breaths. One of the things that can help with that is this oil, super simple. It's peppermint oil. It is a vasodilator. And all that means, again, another fancy word is it helps open up your bronchial tubes. It helps open up um, those cells so they can receive all of the oxygen, not to mention it smells amazing. So with the uh, peppermint oil, the way that I take that is I just put a drop on my hands, rub my hands together, inhale, 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 and it really does help kind of pep you up and it does really help you take in more oxygen um, so we can oxygenate that blood. The clove oil, I would suggest for um, like I said, this is a, a main ingredient in the thieves oil. This one, I would suggest that you either put a drop in water or you put it in your tea. So this kind of bumps up your tea a little bit. And again, with the thieves, it also works internally on the immune system. All of these oils can be taken internally. So this one also is delicious in a cup of tea. The last one um, I would suggest is oregano. So oregano is also part of the mint family. And as Alicia mentioned before, it is antimicrobial. It is antifungal. It is an antioxidant, which means it goes and it kicks out the bad guys in your body. And it is, hello, antiviral, which is super important these days. So this is something, it's not the most delicious flavor ever. <laughs> it's great in Italian food. But again, if you're wanting to take this internally, then you would probably put just one drop in a glass of water or you could um, probably include it in some tea. It's not going to taste super great. The other way you can take oils is you can um, put them on the bottom of your feet. Uh, so your feet have more pores than any other part of your body and your, your skin is an organ. So it'll take it in and bring it straight into your bloodstream. So that's a nice way to get it in your body and get it working for your body. So those are four oils that are my favorite. And what we're going to include for you in our follow-up email is not only a do-it-yourself recipe for how to make your own thieves blend if you can't get a hold of thieves, as well as a do-it-yourself hand sanitizer recipe, which again, the basis of that would be thieves. And then I'll suggest another couple of oils you could substitute in case you have those on hand. Um, my main caveat about using oils is make sure you're using a therapeutic grade oil. So what we want is the highest, best, most organic oil we possibly can get because what you're getting there is an oil that's been distilled and it has all of the biochemical constituents that support us on a cellular level. The ones that you buy at the grocery store like the Now brand, those have, for lack of a better word, fillers. So really all you're getting is a nice fragrance. You're not getting the um, internal health benefit of the oils. And every time you're using one of these oils and you're inhaling it, that's going straight into your body. So we want it to do as much as possible. Um, again, I can help you with the Young Living Oils. You may already prefer another brand. doTERRA is a great brand, as well as Rocky Mountain. And those you can, uh, both of those you can reach online. And if you're interested in the Young Living Oils in San Angelo, they carry them by the single at Nature's Touch. Or if you're interested in learning more about them, I certainly can give you a separate prep talk about those. So I'm going to pause and we're going to take questions now. So I'm going to move us back to the gallery view so I can see all of you. If you have a question, 
you can either pop it in the chat box or just raise your hand and I'll call on you. And it can be for any of the information we've already covered here, or maybe there's something else that you're curious about. I'm going to go ahead and unmute everybody. Any questions? Could you just explain to me again the um, what the Atlantic foods are? The Atlantic dolls? Yeah. Yeah, so Atlantic Dulse, D-U-L-S-E, is a sea vegetable, and they have natural iodine in them. And kelp, K-E-L-P, is another sea vegetable. So sea vegetables just have a source of iodine, which is antiseptic and good for the body, good for the thyroid. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, kelp, kelp comes in flakes, Ellie. So you can, oh. um, what I found is I buy a bottle of it and I just throw it in on things. So like I'll put mm -hmm. it on a salad or I'll put it in when I'm cooking up a pot of beans. There's not a big flavor component. So you can kind of just, you know, season it. Um, yeah. It's kind of like, you know, when you're trying to get extra vegetables for kids and you put them in meatloaf. It's that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We have another question from Merta. She's asking Alicia, where can you find the uh, lemon balm? Lemon balm, good question. I found my lemon balm that I planted at uh, Lowe's Home Improvement Center. So you go to your garden center, a lot of times if they have a good selection of herbs, they'll have the lemon balm. Or you can go online. Um, we'll give you the medicalmedium.com uh, website in, our, in the links when we send you something. And you can go to the supplement list and it links you to the best quality sources of lemon balm, which is you can get them off of Amazon, but you, it's very cheap. It's usually about $8 for a little bottle. Very reasonable. And yeah, so Amazon has it. Lemon balm, just make sure you get the, the alcohol-free version. Does that help? Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions, ladies, before we move on? Yes, Leslie. Hey, I was wanting to know, um, Alicia, um, with the, um, well, when you're trying to sanitize and everybody talks about putting the alcohol in. So when I'm doing my office and stuff, I, I've got to do some of the non, you know, the non-alcohol type remedies for um, bacteria and stuff. So can you talk a little bit about the difference and, and how I might keep everybody safe by using non-alcohol? Right. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, the healthier the, the cleaning products we use, the better. So if you've heard of seventh generation, mm -hmm. they have a spray, multi-purpose spray that kills 99.99% of, you know, pathogens. And guess what the main ingredient is? It's thyme. Oh. It's that herb thyme, which is the flu. It's the flu herb. So you can use that. But the re I just like to stay away from the alcohol-based ones because they absorb into the skin and then it goes straight to the liver and further plug up our liver and pickle our liver. So yeah, just trying to keep you know healthy. The healthier ingredients, cleaning supplies we can use, the healthier our immune system will be for sure. Yeah, I was having a hard time uh, making a case for the non-alcohol ingredient ones. So 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 thank you. That'll help a lot. Yeah, thank you. Uh -huh. Anybody else? And we'll move on. If I just have one question. Um, if you make a mixture of um, white vinegar and water, I understand that is very good for antiviral um, solutions. It, do you know anything about white vinegar? I've heard it's great, a, a solution for a natural, yeah, cleaning solution. So I would say that's fine. I don't advocate taking vinegar in as a health solution, like apple cider. I don't even like to drink any of that anymore. I used to right. because it, uh, it's a pickling agent. It pickles us. <laughs> so I yeah. like to use vinegar and I love it to use it externally. So it, yes, that's a good one. Thank you. Awesome. We've got a few more um, 
things to suggest for y'all. So we're going to move on and then we're going to have a little more time again at the end for some more questions. So if we didn't cover it now, just save it for the end. I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody. All righty. And we'll move back to if you want to click on speaker view again and then you'll see my big redheaded face. <laughs> so the next portion of this um, that we're wanting to do for our body to bolster our immune system is movement. And by movement, we're not telling you that all of you need to go out and start some big time exercise program right now. Our focus here is on oxygenating our blood, is raising our oxygen levels. And so some of the things that you could consider doing is instead of, you know, that we need to have these big workouts, which certainly strength training is fantastic. You know, an hour's worth of yoga twice a week is fantastic. If you already have those things in your routine, by all means, continue doing them. But if you're just starting and you're wanting to incorporate something, I would encourage you to think about doing what I call movement snacks. So whenever you're doing something like, let's say, cleaning, or you're, um, you're doing some vacuuming, you're doing some washing of the dishes, throw a little bit of music on and add a little bit more movement to it. Um, when you're going to the grocery store, if you are still going in a store, some of us are now to pick up or delivery, but if you are going in a store, same thing. Could you park just a little further out and add a little bit more movement to your day? So again, we're trying to increase our volume over the week, not necessarily that, like I said, we're not trying to turn y'all into um, big time exercisers here, but we're wanting to increase our exercise component every day with some sort of movement. So that could be gardening, that could be dancing while you're cleaning up the dishes, guilty as charged. Um, that could be when you clean the house, that you're doing it vigorously. Um, that could be playing with your kids, grandkids, dogs, getting down on the floor. Again, we're just wanting some movement because when we are still and static, part of what happens to our bodies is it moves into a more restful state and we're not taking in those big, deep breaths and getting lots of oxygen. We tend to breathe a lot more shallowly and we are not getting in all the oxygen we need. One of my favorite things to do for breath work is something called elevator breath. And I like to just pause and count to four, like an elevator going up to the top floor and then counting down from four. And I like to think about my heart, that the elevator's starting in my heart. It's going all the way up to the top floor. And then it's coming from the top floor of my brain all the way down to my heart. So my inhale goes and my exhale. And internally what I'm saying is, one, two, three, four, exhale. One, four, three, two, one. And I pause between some of the work activities I'm doing to just really focus on my breath and really think about expanding my ribs, letting that belly kind of push out. That's what happens when we take really deep breaths. That's when we get the, the, that expansion um, of our chest. It pushes our belly out. So just pausing and taking some really deep breaths. Alicia also has some um, pointers for movement. Alicia, would you like to share a couple of your suggestions? Um, like she said, she is an incredible yoga instructor, so she has a little different take. Sure, yeah, let me change my view here, see everybody. I was actually just gonna encourage a little movement right now um, with, with you all. So we've been sitting here for, I don't know, close to an hour. So one of the main areas I like to to warm up with is the neck and shoulders. So yeah, let's just let's just gently start with our neck. We're just going to roll our neck around gently. And as you roll your neck back, you're going to inhale. And as you roll your chin forward, you're going to exhale. So just take three times each direction. Inhaling as your neck rolls back. Exhaling as your chin rolls forward. And then switch the direction. And when, what we're doing is we're working with these top two vertebrae of the spine, these top two vertebrae, and they're kind of linked to, to a spiritual aspect of faith and trust. This is our atlas, these top vertebrae. So when we, when we move our neck, now let's go up and down. Let's inhale up gently and exhale chin to the chest a couple times. We're activating those first two vertebrae with, which help us build our faith and our trust and now is the time we want to have faith and we want to trust that you know everything's going to be good here because you know we're in a situation so 
now let's go into some some shoulder shrugs. We're just going to sh shrug our shoulders up and down and around. So we're going to inhale as we take it up and we're going to exhale down. Good. Inhale up, exhale down and release and we're just going to shake it out. And there's one more pose I want to show you. This one you got to stand up for. So I'm going to stand up. I'm going to try to move my screen. I don't know if you can, yeah, if you can see. So we're just gonna stand up if you want to. We're gonna spread our legs wide. We're gonna put our arms out if you've got room. This is called blessing pose. We're just gonna twist and we're gonna bless and we're gonna touch our heart. So each time we twist, we're touching our heart and we're gonna inhale as we twist to the left and we're gonna exhale as we twist to the right. And what we're doing is we're just giving ourselves a little blessing here. We're we're blessing ourselves, we're bringing in our blessings, we're giving thanks for all of the many blessings. I'm, I'm very blessed that we can be here together today, sharing this time together. And once we've blessed ourselves, we're gonna send our blessings out. So we're gonna touch right between our eyes, sit our, right between our eyes, and we're gonna consciously send and give those blessings back out to all of you, to the world, to whoever's in need of a blessing today. And we're gonna inhale as we twist to the left. And we're gonna exhale as we twist to the right. And this is such a great movement. I just love blessing pose. It's my all time favorite yoga position. So yeah, when you're done, we'll just come back seated here. And yeah, that's what I have to share. I mean, any kind of movement we can do, whether it's, you know, dancing. I've had to have like several dance parties all by myself at home here. <laughs> I mean, I just forgot that how much I love music. For the last couple of years, I haven't uh, immersed myself in music as much as I used to. So a couple of weeks ago, after we'd been into this quarantine for a while, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm just going to have a dance party. <laughs> and I turned on the music and just, you know, let it take me away. So any kind of movement you can come up with, just keep your body moving. If we don't move it, we, we lose it. So Let's keep using it and, and making it stronger and however it feels good for you, walking the dog, whatever it is. So I'll turn it back over to Laura here. She's gonna take take the, yeah. Oh, thank you, Alicia. Boy, how do y'all feel? Do you feel a little more energized from that blessing pose? That was awesome, wasn't it? Like I could really feel like I was getting some uh, energy, uh, absorbing some energy and like sending it back out. And again, like Alicia talked, sometimes we forget the tools that we have available to us. Like music is such a natural mood elevator. It helps take us to another place and another time. You know, sometimes we can go back and have some great memories um, and it helps us move. It helps us move our body more. So great suggestions, Alicia. Thank you. So as I mentioned before, all right, Paula says it feels great. Yeah, it does. Uh, as I mentioned before, part of what I really enjoy doing is helping people with their mindset. And so I do a lot of mindset coaching. And my background as a nutrition coach was teaching people about how to incorporate new healthy habits into their life, because it can be quite challenging. So um, if you think back to a birthday, think back to a, a monumental birthday, maybe it was 18, maybe it was 21, maybe it was 30, maybe it was 50. Um, and you think back to that, you know what that looks like, because that was an experience. But if we say, oh, well, what would it be to be 101? Well, we've not experienced that yet. So we can have knowledge like we're learning today, but if we don't have the experience, as in we haven't put it into place, it doesn't always connect. So that's part of what I'm going to be talking about today is in building those habits. So we've given you all a lot of suggestions here, and you may be a little overwhelmed, like, should I start with zinc? Should I start with vitamin C? Should I start juicing? Maybe I should do it all. Um, so I'm going to tell you something that might be a little different than that, which is it's all great, but what you need to do first and foremost is just stop and assess your routine. What are the things you're already doing that are supporting you? And where do you feel like you want a little more support? And instead of doing the full meal of all of those ideas, um, instead looking to see what is the one thing that you could do? What sounds the easiest? What sounds most delicious? What sounds the most intriguing? You know, if you're a gardener, maybe you're gonna to wanna to approach, you know, starting with some herbs. Or if you love Amazon and you love, they're pretty fast delivery these days, um, you might start with buying some zinc or buying some vitamin C. 
But the most important thing that you can do today is with all the information that we've given you is making that decision. So we're assessing where we're at. Okay, my health is pretty good, but I'd like to bump it up a little. Then we're making a decision. Okay, I'm going to do something new. Um, I'm kind of fascinated with the cell reduce. That's the thing I want to do. So making that decision, making a conscious decision for the next step. Then you're going to choose just one thing at a time. And the reason we want to choose one thing is because we naturally have resistance. So when we start trying to make changes, our automated brain that's used to all of our routines is like, oh, no, 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 no. This is too much trouble. This is too much trouble to put celery in the basket and get up in the morning and I don't have a juicer. And it starts giving you a lot of resistance. So picking one thing and choosing something that's really small, even a little smaller than maybe what you thought. So again, that could be just starting with taking a zinc pill. That could be with just adding blueberries, because you love blueberries, to your diet, to your natural routine. Um, then the next thing you want to do when you start developing that habit is just focus on your consistency. Focus on getting good at doing that thing. So it's like, okay, I bought the blueberries and I'm going to start adding them to my morning smoothie. Okay, it's Monday. Oh man, I've already made my smoothie. I forgot to put them in there. Okay, tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to do it. And then you try it the next day. Maybe the next day you forget. That's all right. We want to keep working over and over. And this is where you have to put on your hat of compassion and give yourself a little grace. Because as we start a new habit, like I said, we have a lot of automated routines already rolling. And so to insert something new, there's some natural resistance, some natural forgetting. All of that is completely normal. So in terms of consistency, you may not see that you're going to master that new habit of adding a new food, a new herb, a new supplement, a new blessing pose um, into your morning routine for a little while. So give yourself two weeks, give yourself three weeks and evaluate your consistency over a longer period of time than just a couple of days. Because if you look at a couple of days, you're like, oh, well, I'm, I'm crap at this new habit because I forgot three days in a row. So you tend to, at that point, like, ah, I can't do this, and you just give up. Give yourself more room to adopt a new habit. Um, here's a couple of habit hacks that I like to use when I'm trying to incorporate a new habit. So the first one's called habit stacking. So what we want to do when we're trying to develop a new habit is we want to take an old habit that we're really good at, and we want to put those two together. So kind of like when... Um, You've got a broken finger and they splint it next to the strong finger. That's what we're going to do. We're going to take a new habit, which is weak, and we're going to put it next to the strong habit. So for example, one of my habits in the morning that's super strong is I always have a protein shake. So if I wanted to incorporate something new, like blueberries, I probably will want to do it around the same time as my shake because that's a habit I've got down. I'm always going to do that. Another habit hack would be to use a reward. So let's say that you want to start adding in some zinc in the morning, but you keep forgetting to, to do it. So what we want to do is set it up so that the zinc is something you need to do, and then you get a little reward when you do it. So for me, I have one cup of coffee uh, that's mushroom coffee that's super yummy and delicious. So what I do if I'm trying to develop a new habit is I put it in front of the coffee. So I have to do that thing so I can get to the delicious part. And again, that's part of how our brain works in terms of the reward system. So if we get a reward for doing something, it helps lock in the learning. It helps lock in the enjoyment of that new habit. The last habit hack I have for you is just for memory. So again, sometimes we're forgetting because it's something brand new to us. And like I said, we've got a lot of automated routines. So if I'm trying to remember to uh, at bedtime that I wanted to take a little a little dose of something, maybe again, some L-lysine, um, and I'm not used to doing it. I've got my bedtime routine, I'm sleepy, I'm tired. I will take something that's odd, that's not supposed to be there, and I will put it by my bedside. So I'll get a big giant ladle from my kitchen, or I'm a little bit of a neat nick, so I might take um, a pile of clean clothes and set them right by my bed. And I use that kind of as a visual reminder, as a trigger to remind me to do the new thing. It's like my own little speed bump to stop me to go ahead to incorporate the habit. 
Um, but the biggest thing that you can do is just giving yourself some grace as you're trying to incorporate these new things into your routine. And again, start as small as possible with the thing that sounds most exciting or delicious or fun um, that you know that you could gently move into your routine somewhere. So I'm going to pause now. We've got um, a few minutes before the class finishes up, and I want to allow y'all some time to ask some questions. I'm going to go ahead and unmute everyone. There we go. All right. So does anyone have any questions for us from the first segment or about movement or about habit making? I do. Um, I, I have something that I want to say. Um, I don't know that it has totally to do it's with what you've had to say, but I've bought in a, a ton of different vitamins and things, and I have them op unopened here, and I just want to, I have a picture of it that I can maybe send to you, Laura, um, that are, you know, up to date, unopened. I have three. I have vitamin C, and I have Smarty Pants, uh, gummies that I had purchased. I've been having trouble with vitamins and I found out what it was. I'm actually allergic to vitamin C. So I have like five bottles of these vitamins here. And if anybody needs them or wants them, I have three that are open and I have three that are not, or two that are open and three that are not unopened. If anybody's interested, they, they are more than welcome to have them. Very gracious of you. Thank you so much, Deb. I appreciate that. All right, so we've got some vitamin C and some Smarty Pants available to y'all. So double send that to me and I'll connect y'all if that's something you're interested in. Um, any more questions about the what to do or the how to get it into your routine, the how to do it? Merta? I have a question. All right, hold on just a moment. Uh, is that Jan? No. <laughs> oh, okay. This is Barbara. <laughs> I'm learning oh, okay. a new system here. Oh, okay, Barbara. Hold on just a second. Me... I saw Myrta raise her hand. Let me let Myrta go, and then I'll have you next. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. That's all right. Go ahead, Myrta. I can't hear you. Um, are you muted? All right, I'm going to let you figure that out, and we're going to go back to Barbara. Go ahead, Barbara. What do you think about uh, emergency? Is that something good to take? Alicia, what is your opinion on emergency? <laughs> uh, I don't think it's the best quality, so, you know, vitamin C, but if that's all you have, I would say, uh, by all means, uh, use it up. Take okay. it. And, and then get a better quality if you so choose. Like uh, the ester C, like I said, is just very bioavailable. You can even use like rosehip tea. Rosehip tea is loaded with vitamin C. If you don't want to take a supplement, just you know make a tea, and they they sell that at the local health food store. Rosehips. They sell it in San Angelo at Nouns and Herbs and at Nature's Touch. If you're in Austin, probably on every corner they sell it because they're so healthy there. Okay. And yeah. So I would say I don't I hate to waste things. I like to use them up, you know, if, if they're, you know, if it's in, and not throw them out by any means. So, yeah. And I want to show you all something. This is the lemon balm herb. This is another one that you, that's the one you can drink it as a tea. I didn't mention that you can take lemon balm as a tea. They have it at Nature's Touch. You can get it at, you know, any health food store usually. And it makes a delicious, mild, light tea with a little honey, a little lemon. And it's just lovely. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. I'll get right with you, Ali. Um, Merta, did you get your sound working, hon? No. no. Yes. No. But, <laughs> okay. I can hear you. Yeah, I have the headset, and it just keeps on changing between headset and non. And <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just the the essential oils. I know you have that aromatherapy uh, session, and I tried going online, but I couldn't see how to. Um, it didn't have available dates. But I have okay. a lot of. I use Young Living almost for two years, but I have tons of oils, and I, I don't really use know how to use them all. And I'd love to get your guidance on how to use them more. 
Awesome. I'll make a note and I'll reach out to you by email and we can schedule um, an Aroma Freedom session and maybe a little extra time for just consultation on what else you can do with your oils. How's that? Okay. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Samantha. And Ellie, did you have a question? I just want to know where do you get wild blueberries? Um, so I always buy blueberries in the store. They're not wild. You have to go to the farmer's market for that. Oh, okay. The wild blueberries. Uh, you have to get them. Let me. Um, at the in the frozen section of the grocery store, they they come from the northeast, like Maine, and the best brand is Wyman's brand. They're very ecological. They rarely ever use any kind of sprays. Wild blueberries rarely need to be sprayed with any poisons because they're such a hardy, resistant, this disease-proof a plant to begin with. You can burn the whole plant bush down. It'll grow back like in leaps and bounds. So if, if, if the frozen section of the grocery store is where you find them. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah. you. And Rebecca had asked uh, where, to, where to get raw local honey. I have a honey lady. I can get you in touch with her, <laughs> Rebecca. Otherwise, I would go to the to Nature's Touch, the health food store, or sometimes even HEB will have a, a local Texas honey available. But just make sure it's raw in like made in Texas or wherever you're from, and that's the best. It's going to be a lot when it's raw. It's living. It's still alive. And in honey, once again, is a you could put it on cuts. You can put it on wounds. You can you know, take it and it's anti, it's anti-pathogen, it's antibacterial and antiviral as well. So good stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, oh, Dad. Some raw, like, look at that. Kelly's local Texas honey. Yeah, exactly. And raw and unfiltered. I love it, Deb. <laughs> Paula mentioned that Palmer Steve here in San Angelo has local honey. And again, if you're not in San Angelo, definitely look to your farmer's markets because they're going to be people that are local, that are beekeepers, that are bringing things in that are going to um, apply to your area, your area of the state. I have, uh, I've got my honey over there at the teacher store. Really? The teacher store? Yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah. okay. Um, teachers, that's great. Huh, that's super. Um, where else? Oh, our farmer's market, Dr. Dunham, if you know him in San Angelo, he is now delivering to your door. He, they now have local raw honey. So when the farmer's market opens in May, hopefully you'll be able to find raw honey locally at the, at there at the farmer's market. Okay, the man that, that sells this is Dennis Block. And the reason why they sell it at the teacher's store is because his wife is a teacher. Oh, and, oh okay. So he's on... The 3733 Bloomers Road. But anyway, you can get it at the teacher store. And I got a big jar. Mm -hmm. That's so, wonderful. Yeah. I think it's like $20 for this big jar here. So it's for those of you that are not from San Angelo, you can see what a great network we have of people mm -hmm. and resources here. Everybody knows somebody. And if, uh, if you can't find something, you just have to ask <laughs> a friend. Someone's going to connect you. Mm -hmm. uh, Paula had a question for you, Alicia. How do you clean your teeth after eating blueberries? <laughs> <laughs> you go straight to the bathroom and you brush them. <laughs> I'm serious because these uh, blueberries, if you drink a smoothie like I do every day, it, it, will, it can stain your teeth. And so can the chaga. I'm glad you mentioned that. Just make sure and brush or rinse your mouth well after you eat wild blueberries and chaga because they're very rich. They have these dark, dark, rich uh, antioxidants and, and colors that are just potent. So they, they will stain your teeth. <laughs> yes. Wash your mouth. I have another question. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Hold on just sorry. a sec, Mirta. I just saw Deb wave at me. <laughs> Deb, okay. go ahead, and then I'm going to come back to Mirta. Uh, you're on mute, darling. Hold on just a sec. Let's unmute you. Okay. Can you unmute yourself, Deb? There I'm not go. sure if you told us where we get the changa mushrooms. I miss. I must have missed out on that somehow. Yeah. I. You typically have to order them online on Amazon. This is the brand that I'm really enjoying right now. It's called um, Micro Ingredients. You'll see it on Amazon. Just type in organic chaga mushroom. And this is a reasonably priced one. It's organic. It's, I think it comes from Maine. And it, it's some of them taste um, 
like Vimergy, my one of my favorite brands, Vimergy brand, they have a, a chaga mushroom, but man, they changed it and it tastes like dirt now. So <laughs> I'm not a big <laughs> fan of that one. But you have to, but this one's pretty good right here. I'm, I'm kind of enjoying it. Yeah. Thank look you. look on Amazon, check the reviews and see how many stars they have and try to find the best quality you can. Thank you. All right. We've got time for one more question. Myrta? Um, it was regarding the apple cider vinegar. So you recommended not, or that you don't actually do it anymore, but um, I had been taking that. What is the, I guess, the drawbacks of doing <laughs> taking that in the morning yeah I used to try to take it too and you know I really wanted it to be good for me and all but just the more that I've learned about vinegar and alcohol too, alcohol vinegar there vinegar is a pickling agent okay <laughs> it, you, you use it to pickle things and that you know when we use a pickling agent in, in our body you know it's kind of pickling our liver you know it's a it's not a really a, absorbing a, it, I just prefer to use it externally more now than I than I do internally. And I used to be, a, you know, tried to like it, and I just noticed it would just gag me. And the more, you know, vinegar is getting to where I can't even hardly swallow it anymore. So I'm wondering, you know, is this really good for me? And and I, so you know, take it, play with it, think think about it, you know, go with your gut instinct and. If you were using it, Merta, for like a cleansing agent, mm -hmm. you know, like that's what it was, it's been mm -hmm. usually prescribed for or suggested for, you might try switching over to lemon for a little bit in your water and just see if you notice a difference. Mm -hmm. And yes. hey, by all means, uh, it is the best, the organic apple cider vinegar. If you are going to use a little vinegar in a dressing or something, yeah, that, that's the best kind to use for sure. It is the healthiest version of it, but it's not something I would use as a tonic every single day. Kind of thing just in mm -hmm. you know limited, okay. limited. Mm -hmm. fantastic well, we are at time ladies and i want to honor your time so um alicia if you are in san angelo um alicia teaches yoga class every wednesday currently online through yoga san angelo i'm also going to include her information her contact information because she does health coaching i'll include that in the follow-up email anything else you'd like to tell us about alicia that you've got going on uh, maybe your book? Not really. I mean, I, I do. Where'd my book go? I had it somewhere laying around. Oh, <laughs> oh, here it is. I mean, if you ever want to look up the book, this is my little book. It's on Amazon, Hearts of Health. And I wrote it, I guess, in 2017. And I talked about viruses back then, that viruses are an issue and pathogens. These are things that in the 21st century, this is called a a heart nurse's guide to health in the 21st century. And the things we're dealing with in, in, the, in this day and time are pathogens, viruses, bacteria, antibiotic resistance, all that, and in mental health. So in our next, you know, one of our next, in the next week or two, we'll be talking about the mind and how to keep our mind healthy. And I give lots of little tips in the book about, about mind health and in ways that we'll be learn more, more about here real soon. So, but thank y'all for joining us. We're just, Super yeah, happy so to have you here, you know, yeah. taking your Saturday afternoon to be with us. We're, we're really grateful. Thank, Thank you. you, ladies. And as mm -hmm. Alicia mentioned, we are doing a series. So the next in the series is going to be about your mental health, about your mind. What are things that you can do to take care of yourself that are mind oriented? So we will have another class. We will send out a notice. Um, if any of you are interested, I have an at home mini retreat. I'm going to be partnering with Ellen's daughter, Kim, and we are going to be delivering a wonderful, yummy, delicious experience for you. At, um, in the comfort of your own home and we're going to have a virtual cacao ceremony so you'll learn about yet another superfood which is cacao um, so if you're interested in that I'll be sending out information in this follow-up email or you can just um, hit me up today we are today is the last day to register for it because we're sending you out a surprise package in the mail and I need to get those out on Monday so you'll have them in time for the retreat Lastly, in your follow-up email, there is a summit that's coming up. It's Hay House. Um, it's their Food Revolution Summit. It's starting on April 25th, which is next Saturday, and it runs through May 3rd. There's a lot of different speakers there. We're going to include a link for you. So if everything that you've learned here is just like exciting the heck out of you and you want more knowledge, um, Alicia was saying that she's attended this summit several times, and it's just robust with information. 
great speakers, very, very knowledgeable, um, you know, top of the line information, the most current information you can, uh, uh, things for you to support your own health. And again, we just want to thank all of you for um, spending your Saturday afternoon with us, your time, your attention, and all of your questions. And again, if you have anything else, you can reach out to Alicia or I through the email, and we would just love to hear from y'all. So thank you, ladies. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you.